right, welcome back. I'm Bill Westlake and this is Lag Demon Programming and in this series we're talking about some fundamentals of computer programming uh, that every programmer needs to uh, understand a little bit about. And in this uh, video we're going to talk about data structures and I'm going to talk about them just uh, briefly here on the whiteboard, at least one or two. And then uh, we're going to uh, go into Visual Studio and actually write some code to build one of these data structures. And uh, so the first one that I want to talk about is the simplest of them all, and it's just an array. And uh, an array is just a series of elements, one after another. And it has a address at the start. And this is usually represented by some kind of a pointer, and we're going to talk about pointers. But you don't have to reference it as a pointer when you're thinking about code, but this is what I want you to think about. If this is the address here, and we look at that address, we get whatever data is at that address. If we add one to that address, the next address is here. This is plus one, and this is plus two and this is plus three. It's the address plus one and the address plus two. You notice this one here is actually plus zero. And this is why we get this thing called zero based indexing. It is also why some people say that programmers count starting at zero. It's actually because it's very easy to access this array as zero plus one plus two plus zero plus one plus two plus three because it's just the address plus that index. But it's not quite. It is that way for us as programmers in most cases, but underlying in the system, this data structure has a size. Well, this works out perfectly if these are actually just neighboring addresses and this is the smallest size that you can be for the platform, but it doesn't work out so well if this is some kind of a data structure. So in actuality, these data, these data points have a size, okay? And the compiler, because it understands types, especially when we're talking about C++, which in these series of courses, we are mostly talking about C++. <clears throat> Uh, it understands this type that is in this array location and it knows its size. So the reality is it's the address of the start of the array plus the size of that particular type of element plus that index. Or excuse me, the size times the index. So it takes the size and multiplies it by the index. So the size times zero is zero plus the address is just the address. The size times one is that address plus that size. So it skips the first one and gets to an address of the size of this array element. And that's how arrays work and they can be represented in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's very common in C and C++ to talk about this a char pointer, my string, and this represents a, a, a string of characters, the first element, it, the address of a string of characters, and we normally just think of that as a string of characters terminated by a zero on the end, and we'll talk about strings. Uh, we don't know, but we can access it as an array because that pointer is pointing to the beginning of this address and forms an array of ASCII or Unicode characters of some kind. So that's the basics of how an array works. Let's uh, go to a new page here. And I'm going to talk now about a, a singly linked list. Well, just like, uh, just like an array, we have some elements, uh, and those elements are something we want to connect together, but they aren't necessarily next to each other in memory. In fact, they can be any place in memory that we want, 
because this has some data associated with it and then it's got a special data element that is a pointer to one of these elements and it's pointing to the next element and we call that usually next it's the next element in the list and every element has that same next pointer pointing to the next element in the list so the record contains some data plus a pointer to another one of these records now that can be a null pointer so for instance in this last one here this is actually a null pointer here and we're talking again in, in C++ uh, other languages may call this different names but the principles the same in all languages that deal with these kinds of data structures they just may name things differently and I'm going to use the C++ terminology so each one of these has a next pointer so what do we do how do we manipulate this we usually call this one here the root and we have a special name for this one we usually call the tail uh, though you may not see that uh, in any kind of like object that you deal with you you won't necessarily see these things they're internal to the mechanism that controls it so let's start with our empty list we create a single item that's got some data and it initially has a null pointer and this is our initial root when we create it then we want to add an item onto this list well we create another item and we assign we go back to this root and we assign this next pointer to point to this new item that we just created and we assign this one will stay now as a null pointer and this one will become the next item however we have to keep track of this so at the same time we add even when we create this root we also assign it to a thing called the tail okay so that when we assign this we actually also assign it to this tail object which is something we keep track of excuse me I did not write that very well at all let me see if I can uh, erase that a little bit and this is the tail and so when we create it we assign it to this tail object if we add another one on we do the same thing we go to the tail object now and we assign this to this new record that we create and we make this the this pointer next to that it's no longer null and this one is null but then we got to move the tail so we move the tail over here so we always know where the tail is the end of the list so we can add on to the end of the list to iterate through this uh, it's very simple you you take the root you do whatever you want with that root data and then you simply move your pointer to the next pointer of that root and check to make sure it's not null because if it's null it means you're at the end of your of your chain of objects you could also insert into this if you know a particular position you move to this position here this middle one and you say I want to insert one before that well actually you want to insert one after that you have to get uh, this this address here okay and reassign it to your new object here and assign its pointer to here and this goes away and you've now just inserted something even though this may be parked over in some other piece of memory this new object is now inserted in between here without having to shuffle or move let's go back to our array and think about that in an array arrays are great because they're easy to access you you just you don't have to deal with additional pointers you're just adding one to the pointer each time moving it along because they're in memory right one after another but if we wanted to insert into this array a position right here we would have to take all of the elements that come after that and copy them over by one to insert it in because we've got to keep that in order in the array in this data structure we don't have to do any shuffling we just create the object and move a couple of pointers 
and it's done. It's inserted in the order of the array, even though it's in a memory location completely distant from these. It could be at the end, it could be off at the beginning or in some other part of memory. It doesn't matter as long as the pointer is accessible, we can tie it directly in to the code. And that's how a linked list works. So that's, <clears throat> that's the basics. Uh, you have an array. An array is just items of a certain size stacked one against the, another in memory. Uh, there are some clever ways of doing that copying for inserting into arrays. There's also some, some clever ways to treat linked lists as though they were arrays, and we'll talk about those in another video. But for now, uh, we're going to talk about this type of array and uh, this type of linked list, which is just a singly linked list. It is possible to also have a prev um, a prev in here, so it's a doubly linked list, but we'll do that in another video. Doubly linked lists are just a little more complicated. Let's get used to the singly linked list first. So now we will uh, switch over to Visual Studio and uh, take a look at uh, linked lists and arrays in actual C++ code. Here we're going to do it uh, in programming. We're going to write some code to form some very simple linked lists. Now, there's ways of generalizing it. We're not going to get into that in this video, but there will be future videos on things like templates, and we'll show how you can generalize a linked list. For the moment, we're going to write a specialized linked list that's going to be for our specific data type. So let's get started. <sighs> um, we can do this right here in the main, but I'm actually going to uh, do it in a header file and then include it in, in main. So let's create a header file. Uh, header file. Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and create it as a class. And we will call this uh, linked list. And we'll talk a little bit about arrays too, but arrays are pretty simple. So we'll do the linked list first, then we'll also talk about arrays and, and show a little bit about how they work. So. Here's, a, uh, here's our linked list. Now, in this linked list class, it, it is not the individual nodes. Uh, the individual nodes are something that we want to keep to ourselves. We don't want the world accessing our nodes, only the data that's in the nodes. So let's make a private section here, just for our linked list. And inside here, we're going to create an inner class that we're going to call node and this node is going to hold our data and let's make it something uh, something a little more than just an integer just to show how that is so I'm going to include string and because I want to do some other things later I'm going to go ahead and include O stream uh, this doesn't necessarily pertain directly to linked list but I'll show you what we're going to do with that when the time comes and we'll just have them there so in our node, let's uh, create a public area here, and we're, we're not going to bother. Our class, our linked list class, is the only thing that's going to access this node. So I'm just going to make some public, uh, uh, some public member variables in here uh, and not bother with accessors. That way the linked list can just access them directly, but this class is the only thing that can access this node, so we're very secure there. Uh, so we'll uh, create this first one. We'll make it a, uh, a string and we'll call it name. Oops. Double colon for a scope operator. Uh, we'll call it uh, uh, string state and Stand, uh, and int age the three uh, the three values we want to store about a person but we need something else we need a node pointer called next and that's it that's our entire node we can build a linked list out of that uh, let's add <coughs> let's create uh, well so we don't really need much in the way of a constructor. Uh, oops. Let's open, first of all, let's take this linklist.cpp and put it in the uh, source files uh, filter. 
and let's open up linked list.cpp. Uh, this doesn't really need to initialize. Well, it may. Let's uh, look here. All right. So this linked list needs a node pointer called root, and it needs a node pointer called tail. We discussed these in our uh, previous lecture. The root is the start of the list, the tail is the last element of the list, and it gives us an anchor point for adding to the end of the list. That's the purpose of tail. And the root gives us an anchor on the beginning of the list. That's all those are for. Let's go over here to our CPP, oops, excuse me, this CPP file here, and let's go ahead and initialize those to null pointer, and we'll do it this way. Uh, we'll go root is null pointer and tail is null pointer and that's all we need to do for the constructor of our linked list well the most obvious thing is we want to add uh, we want to add information to this <clears throat> well I just thought of something because we've got multiple things in here uh, we actually uh, uh, it would be better if we separated this out and I'll explain why. <clears throat> so I'm going to refactor this. I'm going to do a type def up here of a struct called person. And I'm going to grab the information about the person. And I'm going to put it up here. So we still don't want people accessing the node, but we have to have some sort of structure of data that they want that they can handle and they can handle the person structure so what we're going to put inside here is a oh let's call this uh, let's do this person inside our node we're just going to have a person pointer called person and so now we've got to give them the ability to add a person to the list so we're going to let them worry about the person pointer itself. We're just going to manage it. We're going to worry about our node pointers. So this is what we'll do. We'll have a function called that starts uh, that returns void and it's add person. And it's going to take a person pointer person. Excuse me. It's a person pointer person. All right. And so what are we going to do? When we add a person, the first thing we want to think about is our root null or not, null pointer or not. If our root is null pointer, then both the root and the tail need to be this item because the first element and the last element are the same element and it's got to be assigned. If the root and tail are not null, they should never be one one null and the other one not null. That should never happen. We'll, we'll be sure of that. So if the root is null, if root equals equals null pointer, this is very simple. We're going to assign root equals person Oh, root equals new node and we're going to initialize it person equals root equals new node well we'll do this simply we'll go root equals new node uh, root dot person it, root pointer person equals person and tail equals root so that's if <coughs> the root I uh, got a semicolon that is if the root is null we're gonna create a new node assign the person to it and assign the tail to the same node and then we're done so what we want to do here is return if we if we make it down to here then 
<clears throat> the root is not null. So what do we have to do? Well, we still have to create a new node. So instead of doing this uh, this way, uh, let's go uh, node pointer new node equals new node new node pointer person equals person then we can get rid of uh, these two lines and just say root equals new node and tail equals root <clears throat> now we don't have to do that again so when we come down here we still have to make these <clears throat> make this new node and assign the person to it what we need to do now however is take that tail and manipulate the tail so what we want to do here is say that tail pointer next equals new node and that's it for adding a node to the end of our list but it's not it for getting these items back. And so how do we want to get the items back? Well, <clears throat> there's a couple of ways that we can do that. And really what we want to have is an iterator object of some kind that we can call next on and get the next item in the list until we get no more back, uh, until it's, uh, until it's uh, a null. Uh, and there's a variety of ways we can do that. But for the moment, what I'm going to do is just have a, a function. And this is why I included this O stream. I'm just going to have a function that, uh, that prints out the, the data from our person uh, for each element in the list. And so what I'm going to do is go here and go uh, standard. And this is just a simple operator overload. Operator our stream operator and we're sending in an O stream ampersand OS and it's going to take a linked list it's going to take a constant linked list and by the way this needs to be a friend linked list ampersand we'll just call it LL and so uh, this has got to be standard O stream So what are we going to do? <clears throat> we need to iterate over this internal linked list starting at the root and put out some information about it. And so this is how we're going to do that. Uh, and understand this is mainly just so we can visualize what our basic linked list does. We'll, we'll build an iterator for it uh, either in this video if we have time or in, uh, in the next video. Let's see how we're doing on time 12 minutes we're good all right so the first thing we want to do is uh create a, a node pointer that's going to represent our uh our root and it's uh we'll just call it start equals root okay or no node pointer uh equals ll dot root but we're not going to call it start we're going to call it current and so our current one is our root. And so we're going to say while current does not equal null pointer. And if you're wondering about my fancy uh, 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 equal, uh, not equals there, uh, it's just a uh, special font I have installed in Visual Studio uh, that shows up symbols a little more mathematically and it's a little nicer to read. Uh, but it, that's just a... Uh, <laughs> that's just a not equal uh, a uh, exclamation point equals sign and it shows up as that <clears throat> while the current does not equal null pointer what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, OS uh, not LL uh, current pointer person pointer name and we'll put a space in here current pointer person 
pointer state and another space and then current current pointer person pointer and we'll put age and then we'll go standard and L and L I don't understand why that's and L that's why okay and then so we've we output the current one we're on and we say current equals current pointer next so what this does is it bumps us to the next one in the list or a null pointer if the last end of that tail is null pointer then we end the loop and we return otherwise it'll print out each item in our list and at the very bottom here all we want to do is return OS and that's how we do a, a, an overload of a stream operator let's go to our main function and include this and see how it works so far so here's our main function and we've got uh, we're already including oh that's linked list uh, we had a linked list dot h5 oh uh, did I already put it in I guess I already put it in there linked list yeah all right oh that's our linked list CPP uh, we want our this one there's our main okay we can get rid of the hello world I got myself confused there for a minute all right now we need to include our linked list dot h and we can say uh, linked list we'll just call it ll so that just creates a linked list object so let's go ll dot add person new person and we'll do uh, uh, well actually what we need to do is create some you know what I didn't do a very good job of that did I it's linked list dot H <clears throat> person has a name and a state and an age oh we can do it this way okay we should be able to do this <clears throat> all right we'll go uh, <clears throat> Am I getting languages confused in my brain? <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go person pointer A equals new person. A pointer name equals Bill. A pointer. Let's create a constructor for that make this easier <laughs> okay uh, you can see I didn't plan this out super well so let's go ahead and create a person constructor so we'll just say person we'll say standard string name uh, standard string state standard or no int age we'll go name name state state age age okay I just had a typo there this said in instead of int and that was messing up the whole whole parser here so uh, yeah we just created a constructor for this and set those it just makes it a little bit easier over here 
uh, to do this, we'll say ll dot add person new person. Bill We'll go uh, we'll we'll call this one Jim and we'll say Doug and we'll say New York. 32. Now, let's call this one Kathy. Um, oh yeah, 25. And then we can do standard C out LL standard and Dell. And if all goes well, it said Bill and Kathy only. It didn't, somehow it missed Jim. Why did it miss Jim? Okay, what did we do wrong here? Link list. Current equals root. That's all correct. What am I, maybe in the add person I'm doing something wrong. New node person. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. Uh, so we said tail pointer next equals new node. Now we got to move the tail equals new node. Remember I said in the lecture, we have to move the tail. We have to move the tail to the very last node in the list always, or we won't be inserting correctly and we'll, we'll be missing data. This should work now. And there it is. There's our linked list. Bill, Michigan, 59, Jim, Jim, New York, 32, Kathy, California, 25. So they're all going in there correctly uh, as a linked list. And that is the basis of how a singly linked list works. Doubly linked lists, the add node, uh, the add person or whatever gets a little more complicated. Also, you know, this is great, but if we had a linked list, if we had 10 different types of data types, Doing it this way, we would have to write 10 different types of linked lists because you can see this linked list is bound to this type. It can't make a linked list of just anything. And that's where template programming comes in. And we're going to talk about that in a, uh, in, a few, in a future video very soon. There's just a couple more topics I want to cover before I delve into uh, uh, linked lists. Uh, real quickly, let's talk about an array. And let's uh, let's make an array of these uh, of these persons here, uh, a very simple one. What we'll do is we'll go person uh, person pointer uh, array equals new person. Well, no, let's make it this way: person. Uh, array person yeah we'll make it a pointer array equals new person and we'll in array form we'll make 10 of these and then we'll do this we'll go for i equals 0 i is let now we won't make 10 we'll make 3 i is less than 3i plus plus. <clears throat> uh, actually, before we do that, this has got to be int. Specify what it is. Before we do that, person 3 new should have been able to give me an array of those persons that would be an array of pointers we actually want an array of persons
no default constructor. Ah, so we need to go back to here, uh, linked list. We do need to go to our person and create a default constructor, which will leave those things empty. Person, uh, we'll make uh, name. Uh, we'll initialize to this state and age to zero. Oops, and I got to put a colon right here. There we go. Now back here, that should work. Okay, what did I just do? So <clears throat> I created a pointer called array and it's a new array of three persons. It's not a pointer to a person. It is a, an array of three persons that are empty. So we can say person sub zero, the first element of the array equals, and we're gonna not do new, we're gonna put these in. Actually, we've got, they're already there. We don't need to do that. We can go person sub zero. No, <laughs> sorry, array sub zero dot name equals bill. We can say array sub one. We could copy those objects into here, but we'd have to create a thing called a move constructor. Uh, zero. Let's do this. Dot state. Dot age equals 22. State equals California. Okay, so now we can, whoops, we can copy these. That's for the zero array, the one array, and the two array. Let's fix those. Let's do this. One. Let's uh, do this. Two. And we'll change this to, we'll leave the this other information the same, Dave and Kevin. And then we can just go through that array and do this same, well, we can't do the linked list, we, but we can print them out and we'll just print out the, the uh, names. We'll just go standard, colon, colon, C out from array sub I, dot name ah and if we print that out we'll get the array first there it is bill dave kevin and then we get our linked list so that's what an array is all about. Uh, you, arrays can be a lot less convenient to work with than linked lists. Linked lists can be very convenient to work with, especially when they're generic. And we'll show how, uh, how that such a linked list can be made. We'll also show what you can do with the standard library list, uh, which we've used in, uh, in the other video series on the dungeon crawl. So that's it for uh, linked list. I'll go over it real quickly one more time. A linked list. A linked list has a uh, a root and a tail of a node, and that node contains your data as well as the next pointer. Uh, this allows you to have that next pointer not in amongst your actual data, uh, and we'll we'll see how important that is, especially when we do uh, generic programming or template programming. Uh, to make a much more generic uh, linked list that can be used for any data type. And I'll also go over some of the reasons for that in that next video. It has a root and a tail. It uses the root and the tail as the anchor points to, to know where, uh, where the linked list is going. Uh, the add person uh, node uh, creates a new node, puts the person in the node. If the root is null, it assigns that new node to the root and to the tail and returns. Otherwise, it assigns that new node to the tail next and then moves the tail to the new node at the end of the list. That's all it does. It's a very simple algorithm. 
especially for a single, if it's a doubly linked list, this gets a little more complicated. We'll show one of those in the future too. So anyway, uh, I think that's just about it. How far are we? Oh, on this one, that's because I had stopped it. All right. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's just about it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to uh, get notifications when I upload videos, hit that notify button. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.